<laughs> Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to uh, Pull Focus, the uh, cinema-based entertainment podcast where three freelancers come together to hash it out. My name is Mike, and as always, I am joined by my two brothers in crime. To my right, videographer and cinematography specialist, Mr. Bert Estrada. Bert, how you doing? In the time of chimpanzees, I was a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> and to my left, actor... <laughs> <laughs> producer that was and uh, nice that was very good uh and uh uh, uh senior casting director uh mr robert andrus and <laughs> andrus how you doing they're thrown off not right i yeah, know not completely professional. I- i'm doing very well thank good. you good i'm glad to hear it oh my god oh my god oh my god <laughs> it's always interesting with you guys that's the reason why i uh why we're doing this okay so here we go uh <laughs> Thanks for, very much for joining us for, for uh, this episode of Pull Focus, everybody. Uh, guys, how you doing? It's been uh, another two weeks or so since we've met to talk about movies and all this other good stuff. What's been going on? What has been going mm-hmm. on? Yeah. I think people need to, wa- to listen, listen to our podcast. To our podcast. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> hey, everyone out there. Yeah, this is listen. my whisper voice. Yes. because Join us. We're important. Listen to us. Everybody has an opinion about movies. It's about time people started uh, going into it. So we'll be talking about this at the end of the show as well. But by all means, if you guys have some reason as to why you think we should be talking about something else, or if you happen to think that Bert's voice is just particularly annoying, who can blame you? Go ahead and email us. It's very sexy. I've been Barry White. You have been Barry Whiting it very much. That's right. I use that man's name as a verb. That's what I do. But feel free to contact us at pollfocuspod at gmail.com, and uh, we'll be more than happy to... You know, check the emails and talk and whatever. And if there's anything you need to bring up or anything that we should be talking about in regards to movies, cinema, whatever, then, you know, bring it to our attention. And I guarantee you the three of us will definitely have an opinion about it, no matter what it is. Because we're opinionated. Absolutely. So what we're going to do today, guys, is we're a uh, char- <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, we're going to be uh, starting off a little bit with, uh, we, uh, are uh, going to have a good theme with this one. This is Focus, uh, Mike. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm Focus. working on it. Pull. Two shots down. Focus. Focus. Focus is pulled. So this, uh, <laughs> the theme of today's show is going to be the best superhero sequel, which I thought was a really interesting subject. Uh, we took a couple of movies that were sequels in regards to a, uh, a particular chain, you know, from comic books and whatnot, but still really good films. And it came uh, mostly because uh, just recently a very, I guess, popular uh, movie came out uh, recently, uh, Gardens of the Galaxy, Volume Two, and we're gonna take a quick look at the trailer so you guys can get re-familiarized with a movie that probably everybody in America has seen. Here we go. Hope you're ready. It'll be here any minute. Is that a rifle? You don't know what a rifle looks like. It's just swords were your thing and guns were mine, but I guess we're both doing guns now. I just didn't know that. This was an amazing opening sequence for us. You think so? It it was just entertaining. Baby Grot? Groot, baby. Groot. I am Groot. Baby Grot. You're Grot. He doesn't have two O's yet. (laughs) You know, they told me you people were conceited douchebags, but that isn't true at all. Is he eating M&M's? Yep. Where did they find M&M's in space? Good question. I do want to have sex with her, though. <laughs> God. <laughs> a green skin. A gamor- oh, God. It's because you want to be Captain Kirk. Well, I like the gold, gold chick, too. She's yeah. hot. Yeah. She's hot. She's ugly, like Drax said. <laughs> <laughs> but she's pretty. Inside. You're insane. <laughs> You're insane. <laughs> inside. I just think you're inside all along. <laughs> you're right, <laughs> Glad to see this trailer is bring out the She's best hot, in you, bro. Bro. She's hot. The robot? Okay. Oh, God. I would take that hand off. Oh, my God. The attachments? Oh, Lord. Musa, maybe her. Oh, boy. 
I'm glad they made her a bigger character. Yeah, for sure. After all these years, I've found you. And who the hell are you? What? He's I'm Kurt fucking dad, Russell. Peter. I'm still sucking to this day. Jesus. Okay, so <laughs> you can tell already, everybody, that there are some mixed, mixed feelings in regards to this movie. But I'm because, not mixed, it sucked. okay, all right. I mean, in regards to the entire group, dude. Uh, in regards to this uh, this movie, but it does, it did give us a reason to spark conversation. What is the best superhero sequel? But first, not this one. first, <laughs> before we get into it. Uh, Bert doesn't have to say anything else because we already know what he thought about it, but we're going to talk just a little bit about what we thought about this stupid. movie. Hey, okay, Bert, fine, Bert, fine. What, what did you think? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get it all out of your system now. What What did you think about this movie? Go, it, Gardens it, of the Galaxy it wasn't the first one. Okay, let's just start there. Okay. Uh, the first one that made it unique is nobody had heard of the New Guardians. Yeah. And, and that's what made it special. So anytime that there were the the witty one-liners and, and Rocket being Rocket, which is still the best part of the movie, in my opinion, is Rocket. Sure. Um, everybody was it was a new start and so you you had never seen anything like this on the screen and to make a part two that just copies it and with a weaker plot line it was just one joke after the other okay so like for instance aka the the movie was awful (laughs) let him him talk let him talk okay so like like you like the intro address but here's my problem with it did we need 10 minutes of the intro? No. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> okay. okay. Valid point. No, we then, did not. Point. No, and I was confused. Right. And every right. time that we got into like the whole Groot scene, it was funny with the toe. But did we need the other parts? No, we didn't need the other parts. We You're did right. not. Okay, so oh, spoilers, was, by the way, everybody. I haven't, I haven't oh, engineered a, uh, a an audio thing for uh, for the spoiler alarm. But did yeah, you? Th- this podcast, I haven't yet. Oh. But this podcast is going to be full of them, so you're warned. Anyway, go I ahead. The toe it. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> so, that was good. That was really good. Thanks. Um, you were talking like they didn't need the toe. They didn't need the extra yeah, exposition. Yeah, because like in the first movie, it's kind of it's so kind of like mm. okay, you know, I got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, we made a whole movie about that. Yeah, you're right. It, so why is that making? It was a good called movie? the Goonies, and it was good back then. We yeah, didn't have to redo it. Exactly right. That's, What's James Gunn though, man? So what? Oh God. All right, fine. So so James Gunn do, does the good New Guardians, and then instead of doing something unique. The best he can do is go dig up Kurt Russell from the grave. The sequel, he first of all, he didn't dig up. How dare you, I'm Kurt Russell? Oh wow, there's a Kurt how dare Russell you. has been working since the late seventies. You son of a bitch! And they and still that- found a shovel to dig him oh, up. Oh fuck you! Out of the hole that he was hanging out in, and what they feathered his hair? Oh please, man! Come on. First of all, they, you did, don't, they no, digitized now here, here's the thing. him several times. They did, so, they yeah. Did, Okay, Several his, times. What's the, the LA digital movie? again and again and again and again and again and again and again? Escape from New York. <laughs> yeah. Which, which it's so fabulous bad that hair. it's good. Snake fabulous yeah, hair. It's so bad that it's fabulous good. hair. That's <laughs> so. real acting. Big trouble in Little China. Yeah. With, it's so no, bad that it's no. good. You know. Okay, I was just gonna like throw down like my chair and like break it over. <laughs> yeah, of course. What like, I'm saying is, is that Jack his, Burton. His, his, yeah, his witticisms and his cool whateverness haven't changed since the '80s or whatever. Exactly. Right? Okay. And then what? Okay. Dig him up from the grave and put him in Guardians, thinking that oh, this witticism now he's gonna hang with Chris Pratt. If it's not broke, don't fix it. And let's be honest, it was broken. Chris Pratt is chock full of witticisms that, that, that he again, stole again, from Kurt fucking Russell, and that's unique and makes it special. Okay, fine. Whatever. Let's say thank you very That's much. That's a good point. That's All a good right. point. Okay, Andrews, so, wh- what would you think? All right, thank you, Bert. Boo. Oh, valid you, points. You got a I raspberry? That was a raspberry. I am stuck. <laughs> would you? <laughs> what would what, you think, Andrews, of this movie? So every time I go to the theater, um, Yes, I have I have all of my industry knowledge that I want to, you know, sure. pull from it and and cr- criticize it however I want. Um, but the biggest one for me is when I go to the theater, I want to be entertained. Sure. So that's always going to be my number one thing, which I was. I was totally entertained. Um, from the opening sequence with uh, Baby Grot. It's Groot. I know. Uh, he's... <laughs> Anyway, I, it's just too much fun. Okay, so I, I just thought that that was that was a really clever way to 
get into an action sequence without really showing the action. Are you me? Okay. No. Um, it's, it's valid. So, it's a valid point. So it was. It What's was the point. I the point is that he's a dynamic character. It, it was. That doesn't do it. Was, yeah. He absolutely it was interesting. Is. What was dynamic about him, but other than I, dancing? Uh, are you? <laughs> oh, right. That's it. There, there. Oh, an almost. There are so no, many points. Okay. Okay. Call me on it. That's awesome. I wrote. There, there, there are so many points in the movie where it's moved by that character alone. That's how he's. By dynamic. the way, That's Vin Diesel. Diesel did the voice for Baby yeah. Groot. Have some well. respect. Oh, they digital voice. Have some. Respect. I don't get it. The man wore anyway. stilts. So um, to be Baby Groot. So no, here's the the, here's the thing. I wanted to be I wanted to be entertained. The, um, adding Kurt Russell to it gave it an element of nostalgia for me, even though it's a totally new franchise. So it it was kind of fun seeing the flashback. Oh, see, yeah, you look to the side because you yeah, with him. yeah this is like you. hairs, oh, no, there, there hairs waving nostalgia? in the air. Um, well, because I've because I've been a fan of his for a really long time. Well, yeah. he was playing with a dog. I mean, he sure. never rode a Corvette. Why so out. much hate for Kurt that, that Russell? Doesn't right? hate. That, that doesn't I'm just matter. saying. That, I'm getting a lot matter. of hate for for me. There, there's like there's more hate towards the movie than, than no, Kurt Russell. And okay. I and I get that. And okay. I'm not negating your hate for it. This is my opinion. It was a digital version of Kurt Russell. <laughs> I know the digital so, hair was so more billowy than. I'm not even talking thing. about that one. Here's the thing. I don't get that because. I'm going to go off a little bit on the whole digital actor. Okay, just a little bit. It's, I, an, it's know, an hour and a half I long know. show. So. so here's the thing. From from the beginning of time, we've used other actors to play other actors' younger versions and flashbacks. And, right. And, and, and people have accepted and it. And other, yeah. other time frames of their life, right? So now that we can do it digitally and not do it completely visually sure. accurately, why are we still doing the digital not accurate? It's it, a valid question. It's confusing to me. I understand why they did it in Star Wars and other other like, things. Dead? Sh- <laughs> yes, Kurt Russell should be dead. <laughs> okay, Jesus no, Christ, that's brutal. What the f- um, fuck is wrong with you? I'm just saying. He was in Overboard, and that was one of my favorite. Thank you oh, very much. Up. Thank you. <laughs> no, no. So listen Come to this. On, I, no, I know. I know. I know. Come it's on, funny. Man. No, but it's it's entertaining, right? So <laughs> Overboard. <laughs> it was entertaining. A young Goldie Hawn. Goldie Hawn. Come Kurt on. Russell. Oh, they're yeah. still together. So in the top five movies of Kurt Russell. You're gonna pick Overboard. No, yeah. I'm not. But it was nostalgic. Would yes, you? I am. Yeah. You liar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, name four other movies. Uh, so there was uh, Escape, mm-hmm. Escape, uh-huh. Escape, Escape from LA, <laughs> Escape from New York. <laughs> I know it is. There was uh, that, yeah, that Blue uh, Steel, which is a great movie where he played the cop. Blue, Blue Steel is a great reference. Dude, Thank you. Blue Dude. Steel. You can't pick the alien one with the North Pole, but you pick Blue Steel. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, well, See, you forgot that movie. The we've, thing. We've been on a Cameron kick for the last it's couple the of thing. the last couple of episodes, though. Kurt Russell actually did some movies that were developmental in my childhood Big because he trouble. worked with Disney. A lot in like little. This. Oh, see, but that's China. a blanket statement. No. That's not a blanket statement. Yeah, you asked me why he was, why I appreciate okay, him as an actor. Okay, name a movie when he was a kid. Uh, good point. Thank you. <laughs> I do remember that he like had some sort of strength serum though, and that like he tied his shoelaces. Name the movie. He tied his shoelaces. So I couldn't tight even that remember they the broke thing. the shoelaces. And the thing was awesome. was cool. That's strong. But anyway, yeah. Um, see, here, here, here's my problem with it is. Um, well, wait a minute, hold on. The, the fact that you think the only premise that I can have to enjoy your actor's work is that I, it's to name the titles that they've, that they've been in is ridiculous. The man's worked hard. He's been in the industry for decades. That's the man. That's not your opinion. That is my opinion. No, my th- opinion is based upon his career. His career has been we, solid. Yeah, okay, Kurt, you Kurt you Russell can't was dug up actually in the Fast franchise before the the New Guardians franchise. What Fast? Fr- oh, he's du- see, he's always dug up. That's the problem <laughs> because. He- <laughs> <laughs> because he's good at what he does. He's not good at the I, I, I just think, wanted to say, oh, let's just use this old sweater because was, we don't have another one. Yeah, I man. had my nostalgic moment when I saw him in Fast Seven, and he's also in Fast Eight. So. Oh, and supposedly also he's the, uh, Quentin Tarantino that, stuff. Yeah, what about the, supposedly uh, he was good in that. I didn't see it. So, so anyway, anyway, well, um, no, just, then your entire him, opinion is flawed. Are you you haven't seen me? every Kurt Russell movie. Well, I didn't remember the thing. I just wanted to say where he was dug up. Okay. Um, <laughs> but your main premise is your main point is that this like, this movie was entertaining to you. It, it was entertaining. I don't understand why they're digitizing actors when they can just find an actor that has a likeness okay. and give them the opportunity to do that. Right. For me, that would have been more fun seeing an actor that I didn't know was going to be a real life Kurt Russell at the end. Okay. That would have been a big oh, that's awesome. They got Kurt Russell to be his dad. It makes a lot of sense. They have isms. Okay. Um. 
The suspension so, of disbelief for people, I think, well, isn't as large as it used to be, and people expect that kind of realism. That's so, the, so they did it in Ant Man, and I hated it in Ant Man. They yeah. did it in this one. I didn't like it here. They did it in Star Wars Rogue One. I didn't like it there, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. Now, are they getting better at it? Yes, they are. Sure. But if it's a video game, I can I can have my suspension of disbelief push through. Okay. But here, here, I have a question. Okay. Question here, it's harder actor. for me to do. All right. And how are, are they? You, let's r- let's are wrap you, it up with this pretty quick. Are you the worried? Main subject. Are you worried that the digital actor is going to take the real actor? That Ooh. that has that has uh, it's part, a valid question. That, that, that's part of my argument. So I don't know why they're doing it. It's a valid concern because how much more inexpensive is it? It isn't. It's so much more pricey than just hiring the actor and doing the takes live. Yeah. Right, but I mean. A digital actor can take direction with no guff. But here's the thing. No problem. Most, most actors that you're seeing in any of these movies talking, are capable of, oh, I, I of agree. taking no, direction. I, I'm, I'm on your side. And, 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 they're not, and they're not burning any more daylight than the thousands of people that are hired to make sure every yeah, eventually- eyelash is in place and every every eye movement is but, but you know eventually that's gonna change where it's logically like placed like yeah. press no, enter I, and, no, it's no, and I, I I get that. I do. I do. And and then like Ghost in the Machine and other things like that that have come out recently where there's a lot of digital work in there. It gets it gets more and more frustrating for me going, well then why not just make it an animated movie? Why you're go live action be, if you're gonna? Everyone, everyone's gonna have to start uh, learning how to be a better voice actor. Yeah, because that, that's uh, I think that's where it said it. Because um, when you look at the annoying. digital yeah. Kurt Russell and the acting nuances that he did in Guardians, right? The digital was just as good as the real actor. Well, of course it was, but was it Kurt Russell? No. It I mean, wasn't. I didn't care. That even, has a lot of even, clout. Even if... No, but even, I, I, I didn't care. Well, um, or, or whatever actor we're talking about. Asshole, we can, no, no, but we can go thing. all the way back to The Crow and Wagons uh, East and other movies that finished with digital... I mean, even Fast 7. Okay, well, let's 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 call blah, it... Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, I, think, so, I think you guys make really good points. Yeah. I think that... Uh, personally, I thought it was a good movie because I went there to have a good time. That's, that's, that's what I had. Entertainment, right? I can understand... That where right. you're coming from, that you have a point, <laughs> that it can get a little, uh, it can get a little uh, hackneyed when it comes to what they're trying to do. But again, sometimes in a movie, what you want to do is take your brain out and just watch. So both of you guys make valid points. Let's let's move on. Let's last move on. thing though. Okay, I think that the one of the things that they should do instead of doing a sequel on the same group, they could have got a Rocket movie. Okay, and they, and it stuck Rocket because I think that Bradley Cooper going back to this digital sure. thing, where the voice supersedes. The digital actor? Sure. I mean, in that case, I... I, I, mean, I, I like, think I most think, people think would agree Cooper with you when it comes to Rocket. I, yeah, I absolutely Rocket agree. Rocket was awesome. And, they have, yeah. and but, people even even said that's the voice they heard when they read the comic. That's right. Which that's is right, pretty sure. cool. Yeah, it's pretty that, cool. That an actor can actually take it to that level intuitively. Well, if Marvel has been able to prove anything to, a, prove anything to us, it's that they have mastered the art of spinoffs. So maybe in time, Bert, that'll, that'll be appropriate. But to... To uh, to vibe off of a comment that Bert did make with sequels, I do not like it when they take the same storyline of the original and then just regurgitate it. Okay. Why not go off on a whole new adventure that actually has more trials and 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 issues that they have to resolve amongst themselves in a different vein than the exact same ones that they had. The yeah, like Star Lord and Gamora getting it going. You know, well, yeah, you, no, no, it's like seriously. Well, wait, hold on. Let's yeah. put a, let's put a cancel of that right now because you already know the answer to that. The first Guardians of the Galaxy was a, was a gamble, and now they know it makes money. I understand that. I don't. I know you understand yes. that. I want to make sure that our I don't. our lovely listeners understand that <laughs> it, you tell them Barry. it that's was that. a money maker so why change anything yeah that's 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 how we except something. this time we're gonna put in somebody else instead of the place of the somebody else that we killed in the last one which okay is some, which dig is up kurt russell <laughs> <laughs> that's my point which is something that we should all keep in the back of our heads because yeah, original material is great it is but what are sequels are they a, a ch- are they that's why dark a Knight chance is for than the other okay team. hold on hold on hold on oh, wow Let's you just that. said it right out the gate and we're gonna jump right into it so that's the that's a good question to ask yourself. <laughs> I can't understand what he's. Is he? Is he throwing one more time? Where is he? No, we've we've been to Sheboygan. I don't understand. <laughs> but that's that's a question that we should ask ourselves. Alfred. 
I'm just saying you guys are wrong. <laughs> let's get Different a cowl. Movie I, than I the am, first one. I am Thank a fan. I am let's, a fan. Let's, let's get a cowl for Andrus because Thank the, you. Batman Six will be coming out in 2020, and he should be in. He should be in it. But that's something that we Everybody should be asking ourselves. Everybody has a Batman ourselves. voice because of this franchise. <laughs> Everybody has a Batman voice because of this franchise. But see, he said a tone. It's so true. He said a tone, which is I've got a voice. All right, well, we'll we'll we'll, we'll get into that in a second. I'm gonna what? do my critique in my voice. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Please don't. <laughs> now I'm going to. Let's jump right into it then. Uh, as you guys have already, already guessed, the first entry into our super sequels uh, show is going to be Bert's entry, which the is one, the you. Christopher Nolan film, The Dark Knight. The most, uh, not the most recent, but probably the best uh, somewhat recent adaptation of the Batman franchise. <laughs> and as he said, wait, wait, the what best. qualification was that? Maybe not the most recent. But the best. <laughs> I enjoyed rewatching this. Dude, when yeah, you see too. this on Blu-ray for I the did. first time, it blo- especially this scene, yeah. it blows your mind. Yeah. Where do we begin? A year ago, these uh, cops and lawyers wouldn't dare cross any of you. I mean, what happened? I love this pencil Reborn trick. Yep. <laughs> it just makes it disappear. Kill the Batman. Here's my card. Bruce, this is Harvey Dent. Rachel's told me everything about you. I certainly hope not. You once told me that we'd be together. Did you mean it? Bruce, don't make me your only hope for a normal life. You're Alfred, right? That's right, sir. Any psychotic... You guys didn't like Maggie Gyllenhaal? I do not like Maggie Gyllenhaal, except for when she was in The Secretary. You're crazy, gentlemen. I know. <laughs> We're tonight's entertainment. Well, hello, beautiful. You look nervous. I've seen now what I have to become to stop men like him. The night is just so you know that the that was the Bruce Wayne voice. <laughs> I promise you, the dawn is coming. <laughs> and here we. Go. We're gonna get into the Batman voice. Absolutely. This city deserves a better class of criminal. I'm gonna give it to him. No! <laughs> You'll see. I'll show you. You either die a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Amazing soundtrack. Yeah, that was re- that's really good. Will you Absolutely. be wanting the bat putzer? In the middle of the day, Alfred? Not very subtle. The Lamborghini then. Much more subtle. Another reason to watch it. Just Michael Caine. Yeah, it's good. Michael point. Caine was absolutely worth watching. So let's let's continue on with that same thought then, because as we're going through the superhero sequel show, we do have to ask ourselves in regards to how it resonates with all the sequels I've ever made. Is it a chance? to make something original or is it more along the lines of we have an equation we know it works we're just going to go with that and i think that what you mentioned before bert and what you mentioned very very loudly while the <laughs> while the while the, while the uh, trailer was was playing guardians of the galaxy 2 probably a rehashing of the same old equation that we know is going to make money maybe not as strong as a movie christopher nolan takes the helm on the batman franchise and gives us this dark knight arguably one of the best superhero movies ever made so I think that's a pretty good dichotomy in regards to the, to the discussion. But as sequels go, this one was pretty strong. Why don't you let us know why you chose it to be part of the conversation? For the it's episode. not a sequel. It's its own movie. <laughs> it's not a sequel. It's called The Dark Knight. That's, he's, he's it's right. not a sequel. <laughs> it's right. He's right. This is the only one of the three that we picked because we picked three other movies to follow Guardians Yeah. as far as what makes – a better sequel, what is a good sequel, so on and so right. forth. And then we put it in the superhero genre. Well, we chose superheroes because Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 right. came out, that's, and we're all, let's let's face it, we're all fans of that whole kind of genre. Right. But the Dark Knight, just like Andrew said, can stand alone. 
okay. <laughs> standalone. Well, and, and that's one of movie. my uh, that that's one of my uh, talking points that I was actually going to bring up if nobody did. Okay. It really is truly its own standalone, whereas the other ones really weren't. No, is I that mean, okay? Go ahead. You don't need an origin story. Correct. You don't need anything. I mean, like. You don't know why the Joker's the Joker. You don't know why the Batman's the Batman. All you you get dived right into it from opening. You want to talk about a cool opening shot? Is the bank robbery with the Joker? It was the reveal. so well it's done. A great scene, it really yeah, is. So, especially because William Fickner's the man. So yeah. the point awesome being is, is that he I, played the I, uh, the main bank teller, correct? No. Bank manager. I chose this movie because I knew number one that Nolan did a hell of a job with all three of them. Right, but this one by far. Is the best one of the three. I agree with that. Absolutely. And then also, as superhero genre goes, it's got to be in the top five of everybody. Yeah. I mean, you can make fun of Batman's voice. I get it. Where is he? Yeah. But <laughs> it's just too much fun to do. That's actually what Bird's voice sounds like in his head before he has a thought. It's that's always right. going to be in that, right. that tone of voice. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no one can deny Heath Ledger. No one. Now, was it no one or was it Ledger that made this movie good? It doesn't matter. Yeah, so, but so, <laughs> it does matter because so, I'm asking you the, that okay, specific the, the question. Answer, the answer is it's a collaboration. Of course, I, I would agree with that. Okay. Most definitely, uh, because the other two who don't have Ledger in it aren't terrible. I right. mean, I thought Batman Begins is pretty good. Yeah. Well, and and what I was going to say with Batman Begins, since you just brought it up, was I was living in Los Angeles at the time. Yeah. That was the best superhero movie I had ever seen. Yeah, and I yeah. as as the human that I was in that time. Period. I feel you. And, and not only that, it was that, amazing. It blew my mind. It no. was a reintroduction to the zo- superhero genre and what you could really push as the envelope goes, which is one of well, my problems. Because it had with such X. a realistic element to it. For yeah, me. which, which is, is what like, no I'm one like, is. Oh, I could be friends with that dude. Yeah, that, yeah that's exactly. Our, that's a human being. It's but not no this one, fantasy. No one does that. I mean, out of all of his yeah. movies, he takes these fantastic concepts and he makes them, for lack of a better term, relatable, relatable, easily digestible. Correct. I mean, for God's sake, when it came to Interstellar, he was teaching people quantum physics. I mean, it's it. it that's his gift when it comes to what he can do. What about it, it, teaching you about your dreams? <laughs> or wow. both. Yeah, exactly. But but wow. we go back to like X2. He was teaching me about my dreams. Wow. <laughs> Which I would think that X2 is the better one of the three. of right. the. But it's still, again, Nolan was taking chances where a singer was repeating the same thing he did before. But both work. Oh, both, that, that both doesn't mean that I, don't, I dislike the movie. I, it doesn't mean that I dislike the movie. Right. But this stands alone. Like, I think that this movie th- could be out of the superhero genre and still be... Uh, okay, that's you, a you valid know, point. You know what I mean? I do know what you mean, you yeah. Ta- you take X2, okay, so it's a superhero... It doesn't fit without X1. You know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't... Well, there's a lot of un- unanswered questions. Sure. If sure. you take it out of context, I agree with you. Well, uh, X2 has a lot of unanswered where, questions. Where, again, this stands Whereas alone this, as a You can movie. just like, oh, okay, the yeah, dude but dresses it stand- as a bat, blah, But blah, it, sta- blah. it stands alone as a Batman movie. Are you kidding me? No, let's be honest. It's not going to be something in which we. it's going to get the initial clout if it wasn't for a Batman coming in. Granted, oh, well, it's no I mean, one... but they're all superhero movies. You can't have a Superman Andrew's movie without Superman. Wine in the background. No, you can't have X-Men without X-Men. What yeah, are you talking yeah. about? Because you said it was a standalone movie. No, it's standalone in the sense of like, doesn't matter if it's about Batman or whatever. Okay, you could change him into the Lone Ranger. Same movie and it's the Lone oh, okay, Ranger. Okay, okay. So you're saying if it's a different hero at the helm because it, of the way in which it was made. Well, we it's had still the same, a hero's journey. Right, right. However but it, you put it, yeah. But I think that's a pretty, I think that's an interesting concept. <laughs> if we had a different hero and a different kind of, uh, a kind of dialogue in regards to it, as long as we have the same cast and the same director... It could be a movie about Lone Ranger. It could be a movie about Peter Pan or something. But exactly, still. because I, I think that one of the cool things about the Joker as a character, yeah, which none of the other villains set that tone, even though the one in uh, uh, Stry- Striker yeah. is, is... Brian prob- Cox is so Cox. Is, a, yeah. is the closest one of the three one that brings up societal issues. Sure. You know, the, he's relatable. Well, he's relatable. And then not only that, but... It questions your beliefs of like hero versus anti hero versus villain. Yeah, who's in the right? Who's, who's in the, in the wrong. right? Who's in the wrong? Uh, Singer does it with, with Brian Cox. Well, can you striker. really say that? Because, like, when it comes well, to the Well, he did it with Magneto the... in the beginning, too. Yeah, in the it, first one. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Sure, sure, sure. But by the end of The Dark Knight, I mean, you realize that the Joker is just dedicated to the idea of chaos. I mean, is that really an idea that most people can get behind just to watch well, the world I, I don't burn? Think, as well, it is? I, I don't think that it's about him at the end of the movie. What do you think it's about? It's about Two Face. That, that we live okay. in a duality. Like, like, okay, I that, can get behind that idea. The, the Batman and the Joker are the two faces, the antithesis of each. You I, know feel what I, mean? I feel you. I feel you. So I think the two faces is what answers that question. 
not the Joker. The Joker does want to see everything burn. But is Batman any different? But right. he's only doing it from the good side. Does right. that make sense? Right. So, and if you take away the cape and the cowl, you have classic Greek drama. You exactly. Have, uh, the idea of the hero coming through with all different kind of genres. That, not that's right. And, 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 you know, surpassing the obstacles and so on and so forth. And, and so this is the one that I do feel is the best, not only film, but it also the best story, the best acting by far. But definitely the best superhero sequel oh, yeah. to have been produced. Oh, yeah, think I is. think so. Okay, cool. Well, to contest that, we're going to go to Anders' choice, which, uh, first of all, you made great points about it, but I'm really interested to see what Anders has to say about this next one coming up. Anders chose the sequel to the uh, the first X-Men movie, the first official X-Men movie, X2. Let's jump into that uh, trailer and uh, feel this out a bit. You have to understand, we thought Bobby was going to a school for the gifted. Bobby is gifted. You should see what he That's can do. That's a stupid do. way to start a trailer. I don't like the trailer. This is how they started the trailer for the Have movie? you tried no. not uh, being a mutant? I do not like the trailer. Have you tried not being Since a mutant? That's one of my biggest talking points. Ah. Mutants have been regarded with fear. Suspicion. Often hatred. <laughs> this is a not a good trailer. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know like the next It's the first one. Why aren't they starting off with Nightcrawler? Nightcrawler is the most interesting part about it. It was the first one that was introduced when they when they were starting uh, the, the PR I mean, for they the could, movie. They could have just went with the ending of the movie, the speech that Patrick Stewart has. Let's <laughs> seriously. Okay, I get it. You guys don't like the trailer. That's good. Let's talk about the movie once the trailer is over. Exactly. Who picked this trailer? You son of a bitch. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> That's a whole other talking point. Except you. Fox Fox Studios picked this trailer, okay? Thank you. I this think Batman picked trailer? this trailer. This okay. trailer's all right, terrible. All right, all right. Bat. <laughs> Cyclops, Cyclops. I know. Like five I know. It's about to get very cold in here. <laughs> this trailer's bad. I need you to read my mind. Sometimes the mind needs to discover things for itself. Maybe it's the Canadian trailer. If they put know. Colossus in the titles here, yeah, I'm gonna bad. die. Colossus. Uh oh. <laughs> she was bad. They did like Ice Man. Yeah. Oh, here it comes. Never know anything beyond what see. <laughs> they should say. <laughs> oh, it's, def- it's definitely gonna happen. It's definitely gonna happen. And starring Colossus. Oh, that's right. They, they didn't even name her in the movie. I mean, like, yeah, no, she was Lady Deathstrike was the whole time. Oh my god. Oh, it did. Okay, it didn't have Colossus in there. I definitely would have said that. <laughs> oh, she was so hot. She was. 5 2 2003. 14 years ago. Yeah. That blows my mind. And it feels like 14 years ago. Eh, maybe a little bit. Does it really the CGI was a little bit dated. Yeah. So, Andrews, let's get into it. You picked this one as being the best superhero sequel to have been made. And Why? Wrong. <laughs> so, so here's, the, here's, here's the reason that I chose this specific movie is... Um, I was always a fan of the cartoons growing up. Totally. Superman 2 was my favorite <laughs> all-time childhood movie. Which we'll get into later. So uh, th- we we actually we debated on who gets to choose that yeah, Mike, between me and you. And I'm yeah, I technically do. I'm glad you chose. <laughs> 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 now, now in retrospect, it's like we're, um, going, we're going back in time uh, no, when it comes to the, what, the, the special effects and that kind of thing. But um, but, but as far as this one. Uh, this one was special for me because I really, really like the first X Men franchise sure. uh, movie, and I've m- mainly liked every other movie since. Yeah. I-, I think they've done it justice in the sense of telling what they could tell in a two-hour time frame. Sure, right? It's about a team. It's not about one specific. person. It's about a family. It- it's- sure, sure. No, no. It- well, no. It's about a school. It's about a school. No, that was last episode. Don't right. do that to me. Um, it's about a school. It's that, about that. Uh, was awesome, by the way. <laughs> Go Godfather. But we should make coming... a Godfather comic book series. Oh, that Jesus. would be amazing. They made a video game. It was terrible. But they can do the mattresses. People from different. <laughs> a guy that turns into a mattress? There you go. <laughs> and a horse head that talks randomly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, guys. <laughs> Forget about it. Forget about it. <laughs> 
<laughs> but you have people from different backgrounds coming in. I mean, they always ca- talk about X Men in general being this uh, being this dialogue about like the real world. People come from right. different backgrounds, sexualities, nationalities coming together. And- so, from the first one going to the second one, the first one set it up a lot, which right. is why I like the second one so much. Is we actually got into the, their superpowers more, right? Yeah. I've always been somebody that's fantasized. Ooh, if I had that power, what Everybody would I has. do? What, how Everybody would I has. do that? Sure. Which power would I choose if I'm in a if I'm in a superhuman battle? Blah 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 blah. My wits, um, please. No, I'm going Xavier. Yeah, every, exactly. every which way. Who wants, to, who wants to have Mind wits control, when you can, like, when you can stop rewrite bullets reality. with your brain? And yeah, like seriously, you can. Um, so. For me, X Men Two was just a really, really great ride all the way through. I remembered the cast was. It was fantastic. a good movie. The story was strong. The too, story was the, strong. The it tied material. into the first one, but it still stood alone. Not as well. I will give you that as the uh, the Batman franchise, but um, I still think that Singer had a really incredible vision of what it was. And he did it justice. I agree. With I you. like the fact that that uh, the first one introduced the school, and a lot of this one actually took place there. Yeah. And about yeah. the school, which um, my biggest disappointment in the whole movie was the fact that we didn't get into the uh, the room. Yeah. Yeah, the danger room didn't the have danger much of room it. was not. A they part played of with it. that a little bit in the third one. But they not- did, and and they. I don't think they made it. Ju- they did it justice, like yeah. they did in in the uh, cartoon series. But I think another point about this, which is kind of like the overall theme that we have with the episode today, is that when it comes to Christopher Nolan's work with Batman, like Bert said, that we agreed to, it can be more of a standalone. This one is definitely running on the coattails a little bit of the first one. But in a sense, I think that's what a sequel's job is, well, kind of. So so here's my problem with what they did with X-Men 2 and Superman 2, since that's the next one coming sure, up. Sure, sure. Is they rode the coattails too much. Yeah. Okay. Correct. So okay. They, they even started, and, and they even did that with... Um, like the rest of the franchise with X Men, where they keep going back to the original Magneto scene. Yeah, where even they did the flashbacks, the and flashbacks, and all of that stuff. Where it's just like, okay, yeah. Um, given we the context, it. we got that. Any of the fans that have seen that movie, now it's a redundancy, and I don't need to see it. Whereas, they really overkilled it with Superman. Yeah. Whereas that, the opening scene of Dark Knight is the new establishes the, the news villain. Yeah. The yeah. New, the it's new an original villain. version. Right. So. Because that that is my problem with right. visions. Right? And, well, and and I would even say the same thing with Guardians. Like we're opening with an epic battle to save the universe. I agree with you. Which completely well, actually, Chris, invalidates the original one because they did it in the first, first ten one. minutes on this one. Chris Pratt actually was uh, caught in saying like Comic Con interviews and that kind of thing. Not not that he meant to, but he definitely uh, mentioned that the second movie in the Guardian franchise takes place three to six months after the ending of the first one, which lends credence oh. to your point. It doesn't make sense to have them saving the universe in the opening credits. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? In the opening credits. No. It, it probably would have been better if they, for, from at least from a, from a critical standpoint, if they took Nolan's kind of strategy in regards to it. And then maybe this could be said about all sequels, at least in the genre. Why not just start at a different different point? And Why that's not start with a whole different idea. And that's what, because though I agree that, you, you know, it should support the first one. Yeah. Like, like well, no, I, I disagree. I, let they me got, they got to make money, man. Yeah, well, I understand. <laughs> but I disagree in the sense of why not make a stronger movie? Okay. Each one, well, because I would say with no It has its first, own independent exactly, idea. But it's still part two. But here, sure. here, here's my point on this one, right? Is now that we've all seen Guardians 2, why not go back to, oh, it was just Rocket and Groot and whoever else in, in that moment in time. Mm-hmm taking the battery that instigated this entire new like battle that they're doing for the entire show. Right. Rather than having the guardians participate in it, that that okay. completely drives well, that whole... St- then you don't have a Guardians movie. You have Groot and, and right. Rocket no, movie. I, I understand that. But now that they are a team, they've got to deal with everybody's past together. Which means that and the that initial... And that still ties in everything as far as now they're a new formed family and team mm-hmm. that has to deal with all of their transgressions in the past. Okay. I understand what you're saying, but... Here it comes. All right. When you look at Back Superman... No, no, listen to me. I love it. Do it in Batman's Superman, voice, Bert. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you look at Superman, when you look at X Men, and then even with Guardians, mm-hmm. uh, 
the main character is Superman, Wolverine, Star Lord, and then Batman. Yeah. yeah. So it's always going to be around them. It's not like that's true. Rocket is. It's just unless you make a Rocket movie or unless you make a Drax movie. I, I agree. And so so to open up, like I understand why they opened it up the and, way they and did. I, and I'm the, not in, I'm not uh, invalidating that at all. I agree with you completely. But now, as far as the Guardians go, every team member still has their influence on what the team does, but, right? But still, the movie revolves around Star-Lord, just like with the X franchise, it revolves, revolves around, around Wolverine. Wolverine. Okay. And so so it will always go back to that. Because okay. really, the most popular X-Men is Wolverine. Correct. Yeah, Even though, true. really, the story is the precursor to Somebody's Dark Phoenix. phone is vibrating. Right. Mine's in Bert, how dare you? Oh, my God. Who is it? It's Mark. Then you got to hang <laughs> he just did. Excellent Sorry, job. Mark. You've been denied. <laughs> but but it's revolving. It's revolving around one character. That's so right. that kind of begs a question, which Andrews was talking about. If it's a movie about a family, about a team, right? Why not set up the initial idea of that movie in regards to that premise instead of being about what you're talking about, revolving around one character? Because well, it goes back to what you're saying is the money maker, right? Wolverine is the you're most popular. Absolutely movie. right. Okay. Popular so character. so my question for you then is with the upcoming Justice League and the, and uh, the Batman versus Superman going right. into the uh, so that's Justice League going into the Avengers as well, right? Which one is is the main character in that franchise? Now, now those are different because they were made, they did the precursors of Superman movies, then they made Batman movies, then they made, and the Avengers, the same thing, where right. they had Iron Man, Captain America, they led up to the team movie. Right. And so that one would be more of an ensemble, true ensemble cast. Rather than, than the X-Men because, yeah, because of what's this, going on. Every okay. time you, you see Hugh Jack- Well, and that, that's story- actually what they did with Days of Future Past. I don't know that any one of those main characters. Well, it's still it's still, it's still Hugh Jackman. It's still no, it's and, still Wolverine. He's well, the one that goes to the past. The He's fe- the one that goes that that all the actual. Well, he wasn't around. in that first one, other than that. Cameo. Oh, you mean oh, first class? You mean? So oh, on first class, then yeah. you're still talking about Xavier and Magneto and their friendship and their sure. bond and their which uh, is a better team. Their movie. breakup, right? But because but of the writing, then it's like you know that they're going to separate, etc. Right. Et but, 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 yeah. but but here's the thing: you brought up Days of Future Past, right? First class, though successful, eh. was bigger with Days of Future Past. Why? Because Wolverine now is back. Yeah, you're right. And, and well, people are going to go see and, that. And, and I am not going to argue that at all because I do agree that that Wolverine, especially Hugh Hugh, Hugh Jackman, Jackman yeah, as right, Wolverine, Wolverine sells that franchise. Seventeen whoever, years of that. Seventeen years of that man's career. Whoever based on one is going to follow that man up. Has a oh, they're really not going to follow. They're not going to be able to do it. Not very yeah, well. yeah. Maybe maybe one movie, maybe two tops, but it's not going to be able to yeah, get any like, better because. They haven't been able to do it with Spider Man. Why would they? I mean, because everybody which is which Toby is actually McGuire. really cool because um, it, it just gives a new a new version of it every you gotta five keep it years. Fresh. But Spider Man's right? well, Spider-Man's, every five years they're going to have a new Spider Man. Well, Spider Man's right? doing it because of contractual concerns that they have with Sony, <laughs> but it, it's I mean with uh, with Marvel and, and, uh, and uh, but, but that's all taken care of, right? But what I'm saying is everybody poo pooed on Tobey Maguire. Yeah. But has there been a Spider-Man that's been better than Toby? Well, we have yet to see how the Avengers are going to tie oh, sure, into fair, the new one. Fair, but the new kid. But, uh, but for, you know, as of today, as yeah, of right now, right now no. Yeah. No, I don't think so. But that's 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 something that comes into play Was a lot. Was there a Spider-Man before that? Before Toby Maguire? Yeah. No, Toby Maguire set in the standard. Yeah, he's the most memorable. Memorable. As of today. Over- That's why I'm saying, was there? One oh, I feel what you're saying. Him? Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, I don't know that there was. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Well, that's something that we're going to have to uh, discuss. And Sam further. Raimi did a hell of a job. Did a great with that job. Franchise, did a great way. job. So, uh, when it comes to maybe those, both of those ideas kind of play you know part and parcel with what's going on. Sequels, especially when it comes to superhero genre, they can take one or two tack. Uh, one or two tactics at least in regards to the most recent slew of films that have come out in the past five to ten years. Are they going to do it because the market value of the idea is going to be profitable for the studio to keep carrying along? Guardians of Galaxy Volume 2, X2, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Or is it going to be something in which the creative property is going to be able to be pushed into a different light? I think a bigger question to ask is based upon the subject matter of what's going on. X2 and the Dark Knight differ on one really main point, and that's one is focused around one solitary character, and one has the additional task of being about an ensemble. Right. Which in X2, they could have done a better job of because, like Bert was saying, which we agreed to, Logan 
Hugh Jackman's character, Wolverine. The, I think the they still did that. enough justice with it where you could say, yeah, that's one of the Wolverine movies. Which brings up... And that's okay. Superman 2, uh, which was my... Uh, the Christopher Reeves edition, which was Thank my... Thank you for saying so. Yeah, absolutely. Which, which was my addition to it. This is something in which encapsulates both of those ideas. We have a film that is going to be following on the coattails of the previous film because right. the first Superman movie was monumental on the day it came out, but it's about a solitary character. So we're taking two characteristics that we were able to see from, from both of your guys' examples and in a way kind of put them together into, each, into this movie. Let's check out the trailer and we'll see if you guys agree with me. Let's see how us. good this trailer was made. Oh, Jesus. I will say Superman every time I hear two. the theme, the adventure I get chills. continues. Yeah. With the three villains from Krypton. Okay, Each this one is a terrible. With the trailer. same powers as Superman. <laughs> terrible. Why do they make Superman have like Each one different powers? To no, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Yeah, no, seriously, let's let's talk about that now. This trailer's awful. Steve <sighs> Hackman's awful. Awesome. We'll get into that too. Continues in Paris <laughs> with Lois Lane. <laughs> Those little figures just flying on the No, it's so funny. It's so great. The blue screen. Gotta I know. Love this. Look at the curl, dude. I know. Look at the curl. And the room oh. continues. I wish she really said, You've got me. Who's got you? Yeah, exactly. The adventure continues. Like, word for word, the same movie. Yeah. So much stock footage of the White House in this movie. So cheesy. <laughs> oh, it's so cheesy. I love it. He's on the brink of destruction. Superman, can you hear me? And Metropolis is in ruins. The Academy Award for <laughs> for best for best blowing blower, in the air. Best <laughs> best blower. Blower. For best blow trilogy. Look at him, though, dude. Superman. Everybody was so young. General, you know what I always think about this movie? What's that? Guilty. Is <laughs> <laughs> what? At the beginning of the movie, they go guilty. Yeah. Guilty. Everybody says. Guilty. Yeah, before they put him in the That's Phantom Zone. Good. Old New York City. Oh, man. Revenge. 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 I mean, Metropolis. It wasn't New York. It was Metropolis. So. Uh-huh. I just love the 80s. Just as strong as Superman. The 80s are amazing. Yeah. The roller skater that gets blown backwards. If you've only seen the first part. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so yeah, many yeah. things. There's so the many things. Part. The guy who's laughing in the, uh, the phone booth who's calling the joke the line or something. Continues. Yeah. There's a few things. Superman 2. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Dun, 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 Epic uh, music Best again. superhero sequel ever made. All right, ever so made. hold on, hold on, hold on. You two clowns got your, you got your chance to talk about how your movies are the best. I'm going to talk about why mine's the best. First of all, this He's movie wrong. was, it's not wrong. It's an opinion. It can't be wrong by definition. Anyway. Uh, I am Zod. <laughs> Wait, See, wait, wait, hang on, hang on. Dear God. <laughs> like, oh my God. It's Zod. <laughs> Zod. <laughs> that was great. See, you guys, you're remembering all of this. Of course. It's because this movie did a really great job of back in 1980 when it came out to encapsulate on what people really loved about superheroes. This movie took this iconic... Who, who is more immortal in comic books than Superman? Nobody. Nobody. Superman is more well-known than Batman. Superman is well more known than Spider-Man. Superman is well more, is more well-known than the X-Men. All of it. But and not what more well-known movie... than Mickey Mouse. Uh, good call. And I would disagree with the whole Superman now. And you would be wrong. So let's Come keep going about why this movie Over is Wolverine? awesome. Let, let, this, let him finish his comments. This movie found what people needed from a superhero film back during that time. If you t- and and just put it into like the, the, this capsule of a movie and and just made it happen. People fell in love with Lex Luthor. They fell in love with Superman. That reinvigorated everything. It was based more on the co- on the on the coattails of the previous movie. I'll definitely grant that. And honestly, the production value was crappy compared to now with a little two eye thirds of the movie was dedicated to the first movie. <laughs> All right, fine. Fine. It was valid ridiculous. point. But my main argument <laughs> regards this being a good movie is that Except for the technical stuff, from a character point of view, from a writing point of view, from the acting and everything, it what? still it still holds up today. What? Done. Okay. It so, absolutely does. No. Absolutely so, does. So what? I, what? Blood. I, 
Blood. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no, no, what no. What kind of no. acting hang, chops hang is Great acting. Hang on. He's not, great he's acting. not talking every single scene. He's talking moments. Yeah, That's because true. He doesn't so even I, act. Because so I'm critiquing the movie. The movie. The movie. It's a movie. You can talk all you want okay. about it. but it Finally, the Batman voice comes out. Thank you very much. Wait, was that your Batman voice? Well, in the midst of excitement. Um, in the midst of excitement. <laughs> this is my bad voice. Okay, <laughs> so, so Bert, I'm sure you just can't wait to, to let us all know what, what's bad about Superman 2. Okay, first of all, what is a lot, good about it? And that's you can't answer it. my question Listen with a me, question. First of all, what's good about it is when we were young, it was <laughs> awesome. Absolutely. When we were young, this was better than Superman. And that's my point. Like, this was my favorite childhood movie. This was movie. cool. Likewise. Yeah. I mean, you know, like there wasn't anything bad about this movie. Now? Well, now, yeah. but Okay, I mean, so you can't say of all time. because I absolutely can say of all again, time. Again, wrong opinion. In, oh, wow. in 1980, it was the best superhero <laughs> movie of all time. Okay, yes. I didn't, I didn't well, make that, that point. You're right. To be honest, right. that's why I said um, Batman Begins was the best superhero movie I'd seen up to that point. Sure. So, yeah, I, I, I agree with those, those mentalities. Because, I mean, like, there's not much of a plot. Oh, get the fuck out you, of here. You dude. jump in. It's a superhero movie. It doesn't have to have that much of a plot. Wait a minute. Dark Knight has one. X2 has one. Yeah. That's based upon the bad guy trying to take over the world and the good guy no, fighting. No, 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 no. Oh, and please. There's themes. In the, in the, but first, there's like the, the misfits versus established authority in both movies. You got like the yeah. duality of what a person can be that's, in the Dark Knight. That's Zod and his, and his, and his, oh, and his two no. teammates Come going on, against man. the rule and the oppressive justification of Krypton. Thank you very much. Next, right. go right ahead. Oh, sure. Are you kidding me? Yeah, wow. man. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. You draw straws. Like, one of the things that really sucked for me was the yeah. love story between Lois and, and Clark. Yeah, right. get on with it already, right? Uh, uh, n- not only that, but then all of a sudden, no, I'm going to give up my Superman powers to be with you. Hey, man. She's a hell of a woman. A hell of a woman. Yeah. For the first 20, 30 minutes, did she prove she was a hell of a woman? She was berating him the whole time as Clark. <laughs> Yeah, it, as Clark. As, oh, and I love Superman. Dude, the second he came out and told her his identity, complete 180. Oh, get the hell. And it's rightfully like, so. I like a woman? Clark, like, like, like a Clark, I love you. Do not be sexist. <laughs> I'm just saying. See? And that's what this movie is, is sexist. Oh. Uh, oh. Put, put the little woman in her little place behind the cubicle. Not a strong character. It was 1980, bro. Okay. Again, going back to Andrus's point. Okay. This movie was good in 1980. It's still good now, but yeah, I mean, I well, okay, point. no, so so I see, I see your point. That was also point. one of my comments, right? Sure, sure. Is is because, <laughs> wow, um, plot hole after plot hole Thank after you. plot hole. As an adult and a filmmaker, sure, I'm like going, that makes no sense all it's, the way through it. It's a superhero movie. So so, but it's, again, so it's really even funny. Guardians had so, more of a plot. So what they did oh, was please. here. Here's the thing. What what they did, I thought, was actually quite brilliant. Right. Mm. They established. They, they established. Let him talk. That the three villains were were um, sent off to the fountain Phantom Zone, right? right. And then vengeance. Wait, no, hang on. Then in in Lex Luthor finding the uh, Fortress of Solitude, he happens to plug in the exact crystal that says only a nuclear blast could could, could then yeah. release them and what happened like 10 minutes before a nuclear, a nuclear blast. blast released them from the phantom zone that makes yeah. it a good movie hey. so so as far as storytelling goes and letting the audience along for the ride mm-hmm. and understand what's going on I thought that it it did a really nice job of explaining what was going on. Yeah, especially right? taking into consideration this fantastical <laughs> subject matter in the first place. Well, I mean, there there were so, so was many. Wizard of Oz, but we didn't need that. And well, no, which was and, a good movie. And I get right. that. Right. And I get that. But I started questioning as I was going. Wait a minute, the audience is more intelligent. Thank you. Than uh, okay. what you're Thank giving you. them Thank credit you. for on on a, on a few different uh, levels with it. Like a, as soon as the. <laughs> They are they are kind the of dependent. Gen- that, that's something that superhero movies. I'll just get back to your point in <laughs> yeah. one second. But that is something that superhero movies do happen to do a lot. They do depend upon the fandom a lot to fill in the holes. No, like they they, they do. The but here's the thing: I've never read a comic book. I'm still a fan of the whole genre of movie making. Sure. Right. Sure. So I'm only privy to the information that they give me in the the movie. Right. Right. In that story. In that 
world, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So here's the thing. Uh, I know that Superman can fly in space right. because he just threw a nuclear bomb away. Oh, from the first movie? Hi, no, in this one. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Dude, sorry. You don't See, even know what movie no, 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 no. Shut up, dude. Like, here, you can, like, here, here's the thing. Here's recite the thing. Every, mo- every line in this no, no, movie. No, no, no. Wait, wait a minute. Right. What I was going to say is because I wanted to separate it from the original, we now know he flew into space and threw away that nu- that nuclear bomb, right. that, that hydrogen bomb, and he flew back unscathed. Right, okay. He can survive that, right? Right. But what we don't really know, and what was explained brilliantly by Terrence Stamp on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, this was so bad. Um, well, it appears that this yellow sun gives us our powers. Yeah. Like, it was so contrived. Yeah. It was so bad. Um, Spoon fed like crazy, man. Okay, okay man. No, it, it actually, but here's the thing. It actually answered a lot of questions for the viewer as you're watching it. Are we that stupid? I, well, well, it was 1980. Here, here's the thing. In 1980, I think we were that Probably stupid because stupid. Stupid. we bought it. It was my favorite movie growing up. That's yeah. fair. That's fair. <laughs> um, yeah. That's fair. But good point, Andrew. So, 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 like, if you hadn't watched the original and watched him reset the entire world, yeah, go back in time. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> like suspension of disbelief. Right? Yeah, yeah. The whole thing about the orbit and all that was way up. okay. You notice, audience, Wait, that Mike has hang, gotten quieter and quieter. I know. And I know. Quieter. So, hey. so, so, no. Look, but, uh, d- valid to be, point. To be do grand- not disprove no, my I'm opinion not, about not, this being I'm the not. best superhero because sequel. This was my favorite movie growing up. Yes. Right? Um, he flew around. Roll your eyes all he, you want. In, in number one, he flew around the world how many times to reverse the orbit? 360, I'm guessing. In what time frame? Uh, a minute. It seemed like it for us as the, as the audience. <laughs> Yet, when he finds the love of his life in danger in Paris, yeah. we're along for the journey for five oh, minutes. Geez, okay. How long does it take for Superman to get to Paris in that movie? Right, right. I understand. Let alone, I understand. how long does it take for him to save the kid falling off? The, so let me get this straight. There's let so me get many this issues I have with Hold this movie. Hold on a second. So, so your, many. your main argument in regards to this not being as good as it possibly could be is that you're trying to argue the sensical, physical attitude when it comes to a man who can deflect bullets with his fucking eyeball. Give me consistency, man. All right. Give okay. me consistency. Okay. I can agree with consistency. If he can fly around the world that fast, he should be a... Oh. By the way, if he can teleport at the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah, By the way, if he can, if he can use um, a telepathy with his finger. Right. Uh, by the way, if he can throw a saran wrap. Right. Simple, <laughs> saran like, wrap. like, give me consistency. Well, we all know. Now, that. here's the thing. Okay. Here's the thing. Fortress of Solitude. I can, I can give you the saran wrap. Yeah. Right. Yeah. However, the telepathy that obviously General Zod and his crew figure out in two sure, seconds sure. that we've never seen before, sure. he deflects all three of them in well, the fortress, let, which gives keep, him his power, I get, but well, whatever. I, this, this falls kind of like into what, <sighs> what, what you were mentioning before, where the fandom does fill in the holes, and right. that's something that falls in every superhero movie. The reason as to why this is a good superhero sequel is because it does a good job of to a, the previous two points we mentioned before in my opinion has a solitary character <laughs> right and rides on the coattails of the previous of the previous movie just enough to maintain this this entertaining kind of kind of epilogue this kind of dialogue that's happening when it comes to the action so chris reed put on his blue tidies okay How dare again you? <laughs> yeah hey, uh, yeah and that makes it a good sequel hey get out of here not, that so is, so i i did that's what a sequel is you know t- again a sequel dark, dark is a knight? continuation of the idea that was presented in the first film right but again with dark knight same same tidies he put on the same armor uh-huh but made a better movie Okay, because so, like at least with Superman, yeah. This well, is, in this one, he actually had a Lamborghini. <laughs> <laughs> in, 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 this, in Superman, okay, even if you hadn't read a comic book, yeah, in your entire life, didn't know who Superman was, right? You're still entertained. Yes, I'll give you that. Right. Number one, uh, Gene Hackman, Chris Reeve, all of them great, give chops. Great acting. You know, they do some cool stuff. Just like Marlon's in it. Just, you know, just, you know. just the right amount of camp, which is actually like, see, really. Re- Anders can can speak so, to this. So very, very challenging. Okay, 
the the camp, there is no camp in two. Okay, wait, wait what? Wait, you're, you're the talking, sheriff? You're, you're, Superman two? There's on. no camp? Are you wait, kidding me? Wait, wait where? No, are no. you <laughs> fat? Are you no, me? hang on, hang on, hang on. Like I was gonna bring up this point because it bothered me so much. Did Go you right watch ahead. the ver- Did you watch the version? <laughs> When um, Zod and his crew ended up at the Fortress of Solitude for the first time and talked about interior decorating. Oh, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hang That's on, camp? Hang on. That's no, just stupid, No, man. no, no that, this is my point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but like, here's right. the thing. The director left it in there because in that time frame, he's just like, oh, Terrence Stamp was hysterical with his life. It made no sense. He is an alien from another planet, another solar okay, system. Okay, that was in the director's Who? cut. It I, was not in the main published no, film. No, I, under, was... I understand that. And once I realized that, I was so irritated with the director's oh, cut. I was. I was just like, why couldn't you just leave it alone? Right. It was okay. Um, but, uh, no, it, this was... Unfortunately, the re- the re- unfortunately, I did see the director's cut, and it yeah. was uberly cheesy yeah. compared to the original. Right. But um, what didn't change wow. from the original to this one <laughs> was, I know, I've got a lot to say, is uh, Otis. Yeah. When he's climbing up the, the step ladder to the hot air balloon, <laughs> that was so cheesy. Okay. As he like is taking his steps and pulling it down after Gene Hackman ended up in the basket. <laughs> like. That was the cheesiest thing, and I love that in the original when I first saw it. Right, like I thought that was hysterical. Because like, again, it was oh, like, it's Otis, and he's an oaf, and he's pulling it. Let's, down let's talk about whatever. let's talk about the additional challenges that Superman two had to deal with. The entire original Superman franchise had to deal with. Comic books were not taken seriously back in they the 1980s. Weren't. Nowadays, when people who are our age are the ones that were in love with comic books and superheroes are the ones in charge who are giving these fantastical stories license to be more realistic, which enables people like Bert to be snobs, which is <laughs> I'm just a saying terrible why. thing. Uh, <laughs> One thing that, that they had that going against it, they had to put in that extra camp so that it could be applied to a more general audience in regards. Right. And, and but, I agree with that. But I do. if you look at Batman, the movie. Yeah. Okay, which even one? Even set further back. We're Batman, talking the movie, about uh, the, the, the Adam West one. The one Adam the, West. Yeah. Right. Okay. That has a ton of campiness. Pow. It's cheese. It right. has pow. It has all the stuff. The, yeah. All the elements from the show. Yet, at no point do they ever lose plot. They know who the villains Superman are. Superman 2 never lose plot, dude. Get the fuck there out of here. There is no plot. Oh, come on. Wait. Oh, oh, I guess it goes back to what you said. They got to capture a bad guy? Yeah. Uh, come on, man. They, they could have went all over well, the place with this. Ma- well, they hang, hang on, hang on. In, they did in, go. In well, Superman what? 2, it's it's his humanity versus, it, versus his. There's love. Su- there's supreme vengeance. There's, being uh, there, there, there's, there's, yeah, there's, there's dramatic su- adversity against somebody who has the same powers that he has. There's an actual challenge. There's, there's his I, history. And, and, and I agree with background. all of that. I, 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 do, I do agree with that. As a um, kid, maybe. As an adult, no. And again, that's so, what brings back to my previous point. Here's, here's here's what I wanted to say as far as an sure. actual valid point for the whole plot line. Sure. In every superhero movie I've seen since, the city and the citizens of the city are sacrificed in the big battle. What Superman in Superman 2 does that's right. is he's like, uh-uh. We're taking this to my own no, the I'm, people, <laughs> and yeah. that and that's yeah. exactly what he does. He realizes, wait a minute, all of these people are dying around yeah, me, or exactly. at least they're getting. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that <laughs> knocked down, knocked down, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I mean, or, or like blown away. across the sound stage. <laughs> right. I'm I'm roller skating backwards. Yeah. Oh, hey, man. Um, it was again. It was 1980. They needed the extra the, camp. The, the greatest the greatest moment in that movie, I think, as Superman, is he saw what was happening and he's like this is not happening here right i'm taking this to a secluded area where i think i might have an advantage and he does that after facing his mortality and getting yes. and getting his powers Fly back trucker is getting his powers back yes <laughs> which he came back and which was that a, guy's ass which oh was so love, satisfying I, 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 so no, satisfying here's the thing the it was the most satisfying thing of the whole movie it absolutely uh, and that's wrong all right well, no it was though do not bit. deny that a little it bit. really was there might be and he's got his statement. superpowers and that's how he defeated his ultimate villain hey man he's a Truck, trucker D bag because he's human. <laughs> trucker D bag. That's Come right, on, man. Hey, hey. I, they're all, just because Nolan gave you license to be a comic book snob in an exponential fashion does not give That's you fair. does not give you the right have, to denounce this movie given the challenges that it was up against in nineteen fucking eighty. Okay, I have no rebuttal to that because I think you're right. <laughs> I, I think that that was a valid point. 
as far as that there wasn't a superhero genre until we got the X franchise and the Spider-Man franchise. Right. Okay. Now, if we're going to talk about superhero movies, Tim Burton did it better than Donner. <sighs> but here's the thing. That was 90... Whatever. Yeah, but, well, whatever. Whatever. But it, the, the it, superhero no, genre I, had not I agree. been established. That's Here, true. Here's the thing. That's what true. I will say is the Superman franchise certainly set the bar yeah. for a place where it could grow. Yeah. Now, I it think, did not kill it like some of the other franchises were like... Like a, the Green Lantern or something like that for... Uh, for well, uh, sure. And, that, and, that's, um, and that's a good point. For know, current um, examples. Let's not talk about that. Okay, cool. <laughs> I mean, and, and that's a good... That's a good point. I mean, I, I looked at Superman, the franchise, like the Rocky franchise during right. that time. No, absolutely. That's a good yeah, no, point. That's people awesome. Did. No, I think I most agree. people yeah. did. It, it, it was sure. necessarily it was a superhero genre. You saw, the, you saw a man fly. Yeah. Right. It was incredible. But, but, but still, you never really equated it as a superhero genre like what Spider Man and X Men did when they came out. They actually established the genre. So they could, where, wait. where it's like Superman, and I would even contend, like, let's say Batman, Tim Burton. It was just action films. It was well. It was still a comic book. Oh, it became a genre well. in and of itself. Exactly. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, because like no, once, I get behind that. once Spider-Man and, and well, X I would even say up. I would even say Tim Burton actually launched sure, that. Sure. You, I, if, I would if we're that. talking about much. it, I really would. No, but not as much not because as much. He, he quit after the second one. Yeah. So it wasn't like it was established. Um, well, okay, that's fair enough as far as Tim Burton being at the helm, but then the franchise continued on with the other two, which yeah, but, but I would Fair. argue, I would argue that it was just like Superman, where well, the first one made a ton of money, the second one made a ton of money, the third one made a ton of money, and so on and so forth. Whereas, okay. like when you go into X Men, you knew. That's you knew that be a franchise. That's true. You, right. you, you knew Spider Man well, was going to be a franchise. And, and, that's and true. that takes me back to Guardians. Did we know that that was going to be a franchise? That's, that's why I didn't like because it. Because I didn't like the second one oh. if it was going to be a franchise. No, that's what they're establishing. Because they didn't think about it. You're that's right. what pisses me off about it. That's what made Guardians so special the first time. You're right. right. No, no, they, yeah. I think they I, challenged what they might be doing, and now that they're. They're successful. Exactly. They're a part of the Avengers coming into it, and, that's and maybe it. that was the mentality all the way on, oh. along with the, the whole. That's what they the would say stones. now. You know, I think but your they point, gambled. But number two was a gamble. I think. I, I think, no, that's, I think w- that, that 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 cinched it. I think both you guys made an excellent point. When it comes well, because to the, it comes to the value of the it comes to the value of a character and the the story versus the value of the franchise. Well, so here's and with the, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, we lost to the franchise. Well, they didn't do anything with the Infinity. Stones. You're right. No, you're absolutely right. They they did yeah. they did something with the Infinity Stone, establishing that that's part of the universe, and yeah. maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But because they didn't do it this time, it's all just for money. Yeah, it's all just for. And the when franchise. it comes to people it's who all just for blah, and I, I, which I, I agree with Bert there. I'd like to think like again, we're all narcissists on the podcast, sure. so I think it's okay for me to say that our, our tastes are somewhat evolved, primarily because we have been behind productions where it's blood, sweat, and tears, and every time that. Even though you understand the logistical points behind it, studio has to make money. I think all three of us are in agreement when it comes to the capability of a, of a character or the capability of a, a group of characters being able to say something profound in a particular genre that we're passionate about. When we can tell that certain things were decided solely because the the studio knew it could make money, it, it it's a bit of a it's a, a bit a of a bust yeah. because yeah. it's a sellout story. Okay, I can, I can I agree like with you guys that. on that. And, and here's the thing. Like I said at the beginning, I, I was I was totally entertained. Sure. The studio did its job. It got my money. Yeah. I do not agree with uh, the storyline element. I'm not Bert, buying the DVD. Bert talked I'll about that. <laughs> Bege- well, because it, here's the you thing. You don't want cute Groot? <laughs> no, here's the thing. I liked cute Grot Groot, <laughs> right? I do like cute Grot. I do. But, um, but here's the thing. That's not going to stand out as much as the first. Yeah. I loved the first one because it was, was so point. new and yeah. it was so exciting. And, and, and I, I, I completely I agree with you, now. Agree I see with you in that respect. That. Um, I love the first Star uh, uh, Superman movie because it was the first Superman movie. Yeah. It established so much. Well, I mean, we saw a little kid freaking lift up a truck. And yeah. That blew my mind, right? I'm like, yeah. what? Yeah. You know? Um, <laughs> you guys go, what? Yeah, I made that same sound too, man. And I, and, I made that sound when I rewatched and, it. And, and for X Men, I mean, watching the origin story of Magneto and and the fact under, that they were they were honoring it was, and they tied it into World War II and they made it relevant and yeah. they made it realistic. And I'm like, ah, yeah, this yeah. is so great. 
And then I saw a blue chick that was completely naked, which was awesome. <laughs> um, all right. Well, and then Rebecca Romaine, she was the first. She uh, still got it. The she first was the and first only. model that I saw on a cover of a magazine where my jaw dropped. dropped. Yeah. Holy crap! And granted, it wasn't the most. uh, Arguably, it wasn't the most in depth part, but she handled it very well. You know, for a oh for a model. I'm kidding. No, no, Um, but I mean that also gives gives her a lot of credit because she was a model before, and she's actually become quite a good actress. She actually has. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I really. She's done a lot of television in regards. Listen, oh, listen okay, to me. Yeah. She has grown as, as an actress. actress. Okay. <laughs> All right, so guys, so let's this. let's go through with this then. I mean, we're I, I'm glad that we're able to get back to Guardians of the Galaxy two, and that we're all in agreement in regards to that. How we were a little bit disappointed because it felt like it took one of the two entertaining taxing, movie, entertaining movie, disappointing but in every other aspect. It's yeah. trying to make money. Yeah. I was right again. Thank you. Whatever. So anyway, let's move on to uh, popularity. The, Look, it's just, I just saw this about Superman. Like, yeah, oh, that's going really down. sad. Because IMDb.com, it's like, everybody. It's, it's only like 27 years old. 37 yeah. years old. People don't give it Ouch. enough credit. They really don't. But let's, 40 years later, we were, don't we're, judge us. <laughs> <laughs> we were children. We're all, it was we're all, fun. We're all in agreement when it comes to Guardian of the Galaxy Volume 2, but I think we're all kind of contesting. I mean, we're all... I, I'm sticking with my with my vote for the best super superhero sequel. Bert, you're sticking with with yours. Andres, are you still has our conversation okay. been able to convince you of another way or? Well, let, let's talk about our own fields. Okay, that's what I would like to do because okay. I have I have uh, talking points on all of them. Okay, let's start with you. Which one out of the three films that we discussed today has the strongest acting? Okay, so I I actually have to say that Superman two did a really nice job given yes. given the nineteen. 19- are you kidding me? I'm not. That's not my final vote. Okay, <laughs> hang on. Jesus. So so there was a moment where I'm like, oh, yeah, Chris Reeves did a really good job. And then there's a moment where I'm like, oh, Marco Kidder's really crying. That's really nice. Oh, Gene Hackman did a really nice job. And then I saw everybody else. <laughs> I was just like, wah, wah. All right. I, I didn't like the acting in it other than a, a couple of special moments. Okay. Right? Revenge. Yeah. So good then, shit. So then, good shit. So then I'm comparing Dark Knight with X-Men 2, right? Mm-hmm. Holy crap. The cast in X Men Two is phenomenal. It's good stuff. If you look at all of those actors' careers and you've seen where they've, they've gone with all of that, they're all they're all lead actors. They've all done amazing things for sure. Now the same thing can be said on a smaller scale with uh, with the Batman franchise, right? So you've got Christian Bale, you've got Aaron Eckert, you've got Gary Oldman, you've got Maggie Gyllenhaal, who. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of. But I loved very, her in The Secretary. I thought that was her best work. A very talented actress, regardless. She's she's talented. Um, I hate, I hate, I hate it when a franchise movie okay. changes an actor as a main character for one movie for one movie to the next. <laughs> so here's the thing. Yeah, but that's not her fault. No, no, and I understand that, and that's why I'm giving her credit. But it's still something she has Katie, to deal with. Katie Holmes won me over in the first one. Okay. There was something about her, even though she's not my favorite actress either. Um, I would much of um, much rather preferred a different actress in that role. Um, Katie Holmes did did enough of a job to say, "Oh, okay, well, she's Rachel Dawes, right?" Maggie Gyllenhaal as a substitute or a replacement for her because I don't even know why that happened. Do you guys? I never looked at no up. idea. No. Okay, so so the reason behind that what I'm, what no, I'm <laughs> no. What, <laughs> it what I, no, Tom think. Cruise uh, what, <laughs> whatever whatever the reason. Maybe Katie's prettier. I don't well, K- Katie's uh, uh. aesthetically for me, Katie is prettier, but. When it comes down to it, both are talented actresses. Both could pull off the role. Sure. I did not like how hard Maggie Gyllenhaal played the character. Really? She she played it to a point of she's looking the Joker in the face and yeah. she's like telling him to F off. Well, yeah. I, that's, that's, but that's no, the character, though. I no. Well, well, here's, the, here's, okay, the, okay. here's the thing. Right. I don't think I don't think if you put Katie in the same in the same respect, she's maybe doing it defiantly. But I don't but think quietly. she's doing it as aggressively. Okay, and that and that's the thing. It's just like, do you have no self respect for your own mortality? Oh, uh, okay. Like okay. seriously, if he's gonna throw you out the building, he's gonna throw you out the building. Are you still? I I don't know. And and I'm not in either of those actresses' heads. I don't know what the deal is. I just preferred uh, Katie over Maggie. So then um, it's kind of then. But as far as the acting goes, yeah. let me just tie everything together. Um, even though. Um, 
Batman did such a great job with his franchise. Yeah. I am a bigger fan of all of the actors in X-Men, which is why I chose that. Excellent. So my great. fandom took me above, even though, yes, Heath Ledger, posthumous Octor, uh, Oscar, uh, Ian McKellen, <laughs> Patrick Stewart, so, yeah, Hugh Jackman. You still got Gary Oldman. No, I, I understand. And, by, who, by the way, Gary Oldman is one of my favorite all-time actors ever. Right. So, but hear me out. I know what you are saying, Bert. I do. I am right again. No, oh, please. But but when I when I'm weighing them out, it's just like Femke Jensen, yeah. Rebecca, like the entire. They don't have real careers. No, no. But, but my fandom, <laughs> my fandom supersedes fandom. my emotions I'll here. Give, I'll give you that. I've got to do it. I've got to. It's a superhero film. It it's is. It's a superhero it film. But to say that Fam Jenkin, whatever her name is, has a career. Come on. Oh, hey, ma'am. Have you not? Uh, over Who's, over have, even Maggie Gyllenhaal? She was a Bond girl. Yeah. So? She was a, a Bond girl. She was a Bond villain. So was she Halle was, Berry. She but, was I mean, like, the Bond villain. Yeah, I know. Halle Berry was in my, my group. Again, Thank you very much. All right, much. all right. They right. were both Bond women. I think, I think oh, your opinion. shout out to Chris Cornell. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I he's had not to, in a movie. No, but he did. He did a. He, did he had a to have Bond. dated one of those ladies. No, but he, he did, did a Bond that, soundtrack. He did do a Bond uh, opening. Uh, theme yeah, for with, one with, of the movies. he did a theme song for Audio Slave. Didn't he do a superhero movie too with Audio Slave? Did he? Uh, he may I'm have. Sure. <laughs> sorry. Anyway. sorry, I had to. I that makes me sad. That's the yeah, yeah, no, that, that, that does make me sad. That's the important opinion. The important opinion. Now, Bert. I love it that you think that opinions, even though they're based upon an opinion, they can still be wrong. You're an opinion wrong. can't be wrong. You're still wrong. Oh, please. Anyway, okay. Andrews, thank you, for, thank you for for facilitating your opinion in a logical form uh, form format. Bert, by all means, please yell at the microphone for five minutes <laughs> okay. and try and convince everybody it's that as you're right. Simple as this: the prettiest film, The Dark Knight. If we're gonna, you know, okay, the yeah. prettiest film by yeah. far. Look at that film, and you can't tell me. I mean, that is the height of did, high high definition. It is a beautiful. Did, did they ever go shot. to to nature? Did they ever go? Who cares? To, well, it went to an, Lake. It went to an urban nature. If you want to be honest, I about mean, it. like I mean, the it doesn't even matter because if you look at it, that is technology at its best, and making the best use the of best it for sure. Use of it. I mean, you have never I seen have anything point. like that. I mean, okay. because even with the digital effects that it has, it's so well melded, like. You totally believe that that's Aaron Eckhart's face, yeah. you know, when he, when he becomes Two Face. Do you know what though? I actually had an issue with that, but I I know what you're saying. It was Casino no. Royale, by the way. <laughs> yes, it was for Chris um, Cornell. But uh, I I know what you're saying, Bert. Well, wait, let's but hold that, on. That's part of my whole digital mentality, which there was a suspension of disbelief for me that I did not like it. But I think that to Bert's point, seeing as he's a cinematographer of our group and it's his job to, and to educate I get it. That's us why and I'm our audience I get, I get his perspective. In regards to how from a, from a, from, from behind the camera, how Dark Knight stands out is there, there was some, some, some digital stuff being pushed and put into play, but you can't argue about the, uh, Honestly, the genius of like some of the crane shots, yeah. some of the aerial oh, shots. No, like, they're the, beautiful. The effects. They were yeah. beautiful. When, when they're having a car chase yeah. with the vans. And those, the are real cars. those are real cars. Yeah, that's, ridi- that's, ridiculous. that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Thank I mean, God like, they actually did real practical car chases yeah, for in sure. it, rather and, and, than digital. And that's, and that's something that, again, I know that X2 is older. But when you look at it, the suspension of disbelief as far as... The digital effects, as far you know, the tornadoes coming the, down, the planes I, flying. I, I, I get you with the tornadoes and all of that. It doesn't feel real. But what I did like about it was all their pyrotechnics yeah. were real. Yeah, and that I thought what are we was about? The stellar. Next yeah. <laughs> so like the cars, the car- <laughs> come on, man. Well, no, no, no. no. I, I I understand what you're saying, but I what my point was. It's the newest movie with the most recent technology, etc. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. But it, and I agree with you in that realm. Is thank you for moving our movie formats forward. And anybody, in yeah, but, but, every respect. Any, a a four year old can be given a red camera, and right. they can and they can take a home video. and It's going to look great. But it takes somebody who knows what they're doing Correct. to use that technology appropriately. And to Bert's point, they who they would, absolutely did that in almost every shot. shot of the and, Dark and, and, and pull up Dark Knight again for me. Yeah, and it, and it goes to the point of. Like using the tools at its height, at its best. Right. I mean, it's not just and I, I know how to push this there. red button. I do. It's more of like, it, it, whereas in the other films, you you do feel the disconnect between special effects, what we consider special effects, whether they be digital or practical, right? 
you could feel the disconnection. Every time a truck blew up in Superman 2, you knew that there was some kind of bomb underneath it, some kind of stick of dynamite. When you looked at X2, again, with the tornado scenes, you know that they are digitally placed there. Yeah. Whereas in The Dark Knight, you never feel that. You feel like it's possible to leap off of a million-story building with a little cape. You know, you, you, <laughs> sure. you, you feel that, that it, it's all possible. So I well, think. Well, and I love the whole like airplane pickup and like, like there were so many good things about the Dark Knight and I totally appreciated what the Dark Knight now, did. Now, back, going back to the filming thing, as, as far as like, besides the, the, the digital stuff, the colors in it are amazing. I mean, yeah. everything like when it's Batman, it's dark and it's blue. When when it's the Joker, it's green and reds. It, it's like yeah. they, they but not fit. like right in the face. Exactly, yeah. it's these subtle little lighting things that they did that was just amazing. And so, to Depth me, of field and that kind of yeah. Thing. To me, it stands out on its own. Okay, I mean, as far as the, the visuals are concerned. Okay, I think that when it comes to uh, my perspective, when it comes to sound, um, as much as I do love uh, Superman too, because that iconic theme is legendary and anybody who's heard it, dun, 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 dun. Uh, when it comes to uh, w- slap in the face you can wake him up real quick <laughs> like, seriously I'm uh, over here I want to <laughs> uh, but to 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 the credit of Christopher Nolan from like a Foley standpoint and also from a soundtrack standpoint uh, Dark Knight I think is the strongest out of the three to be honest it was it was fantastic it was and that also goes again with the most recent biggest budget uh, whatever you have available to yourself no, X2 and was pretty big though too. no no it, it was it was and I would argue that in in that uh, in that time frame back in 2003 that would have won the battle if we're talking about what yeah, was, if we have this conversation what was the best in, in 2003, years ago yeah, in 2003 yeah, we yeah. would have and and that just goes to show that technology and and the progression of what we can do with movies is just stellar. Yeah, and, and for sure. it's amazing. And especially when the creativity and I love and the... movies. Yeah, <laughs> just like, this is so much fun. I love talking about superhero movies. Oh gosh. It's my favorite episode. Well, that'll be that'll be like probably what we're maybe we should just make have like a separate uh, podcast in regards to that just, like we should just talk about superhero movies every time every we time talk, we talk about, about a superhero movie well anyway guys uh, as much as I would love to carry on <laughs> and talk about nothing but superhero movies uh, we are here to talk about all kinds of movies and maybe you are the ones who are going to help us discuss what we talk about next because remember we may not know what we're talking about it's <laughs> your job to tell us absolutely please tell us yeah absolutely uh, like and subscribe on YouTube follow us on SoundCloud but even more importantly email us we're checking the email every week it is pullfocuspod at gmail.com if you like what we're saying let us know if you dislike what we're saying please let us know especially if you dislike what Bird is saying please let us know because he's always right <laughs> we might even give you a shout out on the worldwide interweb yeah get famous it's a, it's a beautiful thing we're, we're kind of a big deal <laughs> Kind of a, kind of we deal. are a big kind deal of. with our two viewers. Absolutely. But anyway, guys, that's pretty much it for uh, this episode. We really appreciate you listening to us and following us and uh, you know letting us do what we're going to do. Again, I'm going to take a minute and say thank you to Bert and Andrus. Guys, would not be able to do this at all if it wasn't for the two of you. So you thank you so very much. Uh, well, I am the you know the best one out of the three. Let's be honest. <laughs> but I I do I do own the equipment. So uh, but no, on a serious point, real talk. Thank you so very much for coming by and uh, you know letting me have this discussion with you. It's always good, and I really do appreciate it. Any parting words to the audience before we call it quits? Don't forget the trilogy. It's still coming. Absolutely, we have an ongoing trilogy project coming up, and the next episode of Pull Focus is going to be our first jump into the into the contender, what we believe to be a trilogy that might be as good or just slightly slightly number two when it comes to the greatest cinema trilogy in history and uh, you guys should check in for that because it's definitely going to be a very riveting conversation and I'm a fan of sharing so should you absolutely share the podcast absolutely pass it to your friends if you guys have an opinion tell us and uh, even more importantly uh, tell the people who uh, you know may not agree with you and, then, and you know have them check us out too so we're always set up your own argument yeah because it's a lot easier than setting up your own podcast. And then write us and see what we can do about uh, talking about it. Tell us we're wrong. I dare you. <laughs> no, you got to yeah, do it. No, I'm sorry. Tell us you're wrong. I dare you. I dare you. Tell us we're wrong. <laughs> I'm going to put my volume down. Just a little bit. <laughs>